Hello everybody, Gadget Boy here. Um, moving right along with our little project here. Uh, today I am going to solder the capacitors onto the board here. So I'm just going to sweep these over here. I've uh, done a little primer video on how to identify capacitors. Um, and you guys can go watch that. I'll put a link in the description or if I can figure out how maybe an annotation somewhere over here or something. Still new to YouTube learning how to do things so uh, bear with me as I uh, learn how to edit and process videos and, and go through this whole journey uh, sort of learning as I go. Um, I did get a, a comment from somebody who saw my, my solder here. I was talk going on about how uh, how I like my lead-based solder and they said but you're your solder says it's rosin core silver bearing solder. Yes, well, actually it is. Um, this is lead silver uh, solder, which is actually, it's fairly expensive, but it is, in my experience, um, the best solder to work with. Um, it is it is lead bearing. It says back here, uh, warning contains lead, do not inhale, yada, yada, yada. Um, I find that I, the, the lead silver solder seems to melt a little more readily. It flows very nicely. It, it goes onto a, a circuit board very, very nicely. Um, and uh, despite being a little bit more expensive than than other solders, I, I prefer using it. <coughs> so anyway, I'm just going to power on my soldering station here. Um, I just have a, a simple soldering station that I picked up at a, a local store called RP Electronics. Uh, they have their own brand of electronic test equipment. It's called Circuit Test. Um, my multimeter is on the same one. And in this case, it's a temperature controlled uh, Circuit Test SX500. I'll just grab it real quick and pull it into frame. So, uh, see, Circuit Test SX500. This is the LED that tells you when it's heated. It goes green when it's ready. A little knob to control the temperature. Uh, this goo is uh, tip tinner. Um, you buy one of these and it lasts you about a million years, and uh, you just use it to tip the or tin the tip of your soldering iron when you're getting ready to do some soldering. Anyway, um, let's see if I can get my cable here without knocking anything over. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get uh, started on the soldering. Um, as with last time. I'll, uh, I'll actually start a time lapse here uh, so that you guys don't have to watch every single detail of the process. Um, now, uh, <clears throat> when we're looking at the circuit board here, uh, let's focus, here we go. Uh, we'll be putting them into these slots here where it says 104, 22p, those are the 22 picofarads. Uh, the, one nanofarads. Uh, there's the uh, little correction capacitor there, which is a one nanofarad capacitor. And then the slots here for the electrolytic capacitors. Um, these these are important. Electrolytic capacitors are actually polarized, and you'll see on the uh, on the side of the the electrolytic can here. There's a negative pole and a longer lead, which is the positive lead. If you plug these in backwards, uh, they will do anything from bulging slightly to hissing and spitting smoke to even exploding. Um, I might even blow one up in, a, in a, another video just for fun uh, to show you guys what happens when you abuse electronic components. Um, but yeah, observing polarity is very important on these electrolytic capacitors. Uh, so you'll see here it's got a little plus on the board showing uh, which direction it wants you to plug the uh, electrolytics in. So I'm just going to get started here. Uh, I'll start up the time lapse here and catch you guys on the flip side.
and we're back. So there, as you can see, all of the capacitors are now placed on the board. Um, <clears throat> I was momentarily baffled uh, because there wasn't a spot for this one on the board. <clears throat> so I uh, perused the directions for a few moments in confusion, uh, and it turns out that that's used later on when you're uh, setting up and calibrating the uh, tester for its initial setup. So I'm actually rather impressed that they included uh, the capacitor that you need to calibrate the uh, device once it's set up, rather than leaving you to your own devices. So that's the next phase of uh, building that transistor tester. Um, uh, the next phase will be, I'll probably just do the, the last bits of the components. We'll get the, uh, the transistors mounted um, and the, the ZIF socket and the little switch here. Um, and uh, do its initial setup tests. And so probably just one, one, maybe two more videos on the construction of this transistor tester and then we're all done. So thank you for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, do that thing you do when you like videos. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.